Hi friends, here in this video, I will be explaining the concept of pipe bend. Now, in order to explain the concept of pipe bend, first I will start with Newton's second law of motion, which says that So, Newton's second law of motion says that the summation of all external forces in the direction of flow or in the direction of force is equal to mass into acceleration and that gives us the force. Now, this can be written as acceleration is final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. Then, here we have m divided by t which is v minus u since this is mass in terms of kg and when i am dividing it with time assuming it to be in terms of second so it is kg per second which is called as the mass flow rate so that becomes m dot the notation for mass flow rate in terms of kg per second v minus u and when I multiply it inside, it becomes m dot v minus m dot u. Now this m dot into v is called as the final momentum. m dot into u is called as the initial momentum. In other words, the summation of all external forces in the direction of flow will be equal to final momentum minus initial momentum and this concept would be used in case of pipe bend for that just now I am going to draw the diagram of a pipe bend. So here I am considering a pipe bend having two cross section that is at section 1 and section 2. It is a reducing bend. It can be any other section as well. Now here at section 1 the diameter would be D1 and the fluid which is flowing through this pipeline would be turned at an angle theta as we can see here when the fluid flows here with a velocity of v1 it changes its direction depending upon the value of theta and here we get the velocity v2 so the direction changes at an angle theta my next assumption here is that whatever we are seeing here is the top view that is now the height is not considered that is we cannot see the height here we are just seeing the top view and this is an angular we can see that the fluid moves in an angular direction because of this pipe bend now how many forces would be acting over here 
at first at section 1 there will be the pressure force which would be exerted and that pressure force is denoted as F1 which is the intensity of pressure P1 into area of this section which is A1. After that the flow is possible only if there is pressure difference. So here we are getting a pressure in this direction from left towards right. So I have to show a pressure in an opposite direction acting along this axis. So I am showing the pressure in an opposite direction. This is the pressure force F2 which is P2 intensity of pressure into area 2. Now why these directions are opposite? Because when there is pressure difference then only the flow is possible. So we have to take the opposite directions. Now as we can see this F2 is inclined at an angle of theta. So it would be having two components. One would be the horizontal component and the other would be a vertical component inclined at an angle of theta. So this horizontal component will become here we have F2 so angle is measured with horizontal horizontal component would be F2 cos theta and the vertical component would be F2 sin theta. Similarly the velocity is also inclined we can see here V2 so it would also be having two components. I am extending it here at an angle of theta. So this would be since it is measured with horizontal to so horizontal component will become V2 cos theta and the vertical component would be V2 sin theta. So there are two pressure forces and the direction of velocity has been changed. So the concept which I had explained that is by using Newton's second law of motion the summation of all external forces is equal to final momentum minus initial momentum. So starting with the x direction I will say that let fx be the force exerted along x direction unit I am assuming it to be in terms of Newton Fy the force exerted along y direction now why are these values fx and fy because since the bend is inclined so we are going to get two components of forces that is fx and fy exerted by the flowing fluid just taking an example that it is water. Now first I would be analyzing along x direction so for x direction or we can say the horizontal forces. Here along x direction whatever forces are along the flow along the direction of flow that would be treated as positive and opposite to the direction of flow would be negative. So using the Newton second law of motion summation of all external forces on left hand side summation of all external forces. So starting with we can see here and we have to see horizontal forces remember we are writing here for x direction. So F1 is the force which is acting towards right. So that would be on left side which is I will write down it is F1 that is P1 into A1 along X. Then this velocity won't be written onto the left hand side because we are writing forces first. After that we can see here F2 was having two components F2 cos and F2 sin. F2 cos is the horizontal component because we are considering horizontal forces first along X. Now this force F2 cos theta is acting towards left. So it is opposite to the direction of flow. So it would be negative. So minus P2 A2 because that is the value of F2 P2 A2 cos theta. 
in that i am adding plus fx because we need to find fx here so i am considering fx also along the direction of flow if the answer comes out to be negative of fx it means that it was opposite to the direction of flow here only there is an assumption that it is positive along the direction of flow now that is equal to because only we have two pressure forces here that is final momentum minus initial momentum and what is momentum it is mass flow rate into the final velocity minus initial velocity so mass flow rate is basically i can say that it is mass flow rate is given by density into discharge because this density is having a unit of kg per meter cube discharge is meter cube per second so meter cube and meter cube will get cancelled out so what remains is kg per second which is the unit of mass flow rate so instead of m dot i would be writing rho into q now into bracket the final velocity because it is final momentum minus initial momentum we have to take the velocity along x direction because horizontal forces or we are seeing along x direction so the final velocity along x we can see that initial velocity is v1 final velocity is it is having two components v2 cos and v2 sin since we are seeing the horizontal components first so v2 cos theta that is the final velocity along x direction and the initial velocity along x is v1 so here there is minus sign which is already there in this formula and the initial velocity is v1 it is acting towards right so positive so the initial velocity v1 hence by using this formula we can get the value of fx that is force exerted by the fluid on this bend next similarly i'll write for y direction that is for vertical forces now i would be writing the forces onto the left hand side we can see that p1 a1 or the pressure force at section 1 is purely horizontal so its vertical component is not there so that becomes zero then when we talk about f2 here its vertical component is f2 sin theta acting in downward direction so it has to be treated as negative so minus it would be f2 whose value is p2 a2 sin theta acting downward so negative then i am adding plus fy considering the vertical component to be positive is equal to again on to the right hand side we have mass flow rate which is density into discharge into bracket final velocity along y so final velocity component along y is v2 sin theta minus the initial velocity is purely horizontal that is v1 so we don't have a vertical component of velocity initially so that is zero so finally we have minus p2 a2 sin theta plus fy is equal to rho q v2 sin theta so from this formula we can get the value of fy that is the force exerted by the fluid on the bend along the vertical direction now once fx and fy are known we can get the resultant force because these are the components of the resultant so the resultant force exerted by the fluid on the bend is given by r is equal to root of fx square plus fy square unit i am assuming it to be in terms of newton it can even be in terms of kilonewton now once the resultant force is known its location is given by location would be denoted by phi 
given by the formula it is tan inverse mod of fy upon fx that is the location of the resultant force exerted by the liquid or by the fluid on the bend that would be in terms of degree so in short that was the concept of pipe bend at the end if you'll find my videos helpful you'll get like share comment and subscribe our channel and share it amongst your family and friends thanks for watching